What's up you guys? Hey, thanks for watching this video. In this video, I want to talk about why 50% of Caribbean medical students do not get a residency. Very important. So I just want to say thank you guys for watching these videos. Uh, I get a lot of messages on Instagram and just in the comments in these, in these videos. And it's really great because not everybody likes these videos, I'll tell you that. I heard some doctors talk sh about me making videos and whatever. I guess that's part of doing anything. There's always going to be haters and like that. So I really appreciate everybody who comments and sends me messages. Please, if you're thinking that you like these, send them. I really appreciate all of them. If you don't like them or you have suggestions for more, I would love those as well. Okay, so let's get to it. That is right, 50% of Caribbean students do not get a residency. And I heard the statistic and I was like, holy sh**. I'm telling everybody to go to Caribbean school if they don't get into medical school, uh, U.S. med school. And then, uh, you know, I come across this statistic. I have not looked that much into the statistic, but I will say it's probably close to being correct. Let's just assume that it's correct. I mean, it, let's just say a large amount, even if it's 30%, even if it's 40%, that's a big gamble, right? Because you're going out there, you're taking loans out, you're spending a lot of time two years at least, or four years most of the time, and then you don't get a residency, I think we need to talk about that. I know why that is, okay? It's not, it's it's the same as everything. I will say that there's basically two types of students in Caribbean schools. There's, you know, obviously everybody there did not get into US school. That's why you're there. Nobody really goes there. I mean, there's like, I think I know one person that went there because like their boyfriend didn't get into a, a Caribbean school so she like followed him there and she could have got in and stuff. Like that's the only person I know that went there for that reason. So there's like two types of students. There's one student is kind of couldn't get into US school, got their shit together or got their shit together too late to get into a school like for instance me, I did really poorly the first couple of years in college and then I got my shit together and did well like straight A's the last two years that's not enough to convince the US medical schools that you can get in because they have so many people to pick from that have straight A's the entire four years so they don't give a shit about somebody that you know transition the second type of student is the type of student who didn't get in didn't really get their shit together. They want to do it, but they haven't figured out how to study yet and or they don't have a really good reason to do it. A lot of people actually, their parents convince them that they need to go to med school. That happens a lot. Or they feel pressure from their family to do something like that, to go to med school. They don't really want to do it. They want to be an actor. They want to be a writer. They want to be an artist. But, you know, sometimes those are scary professions to go into. Actually, I was a painter and I was actually really good. And maybe I should have did that, honestly. Sometimes I think to myself, should I should have just became a painter. But that's not a real guaranteed career, right? Some people can can do that and decide I'm gonna be, you know, an artist, roll the dice, and maybe I'll be awesome and maybe I won't. There's no guarantee when you're when you're an artist. So it's a it's a tough thing to go into. But maybe you really wanna do that. So if you really wanna do that, you should do that. Because if you go to med school and you don't want to do that, you and you want to be an artist to begin with, but your parents are convincing you to go to med school or you feel pressure from your family maybe they're not even trying to convince you maybe it's just like you know the aura of everything you decide i want to do that uh, or i'm going to do this because my family expects me to do that that person is going to have a hard time and that person is going to be part of that 50 percent or whatever we want to call it uh, 30 percent or 40 percent that do not get a residency because Med school is very hard. It takes all of your energy. It takes your focus. It takes a big, you you need a reason, a really, really strong reason to sit your ass in your room by yourself and study for 10 hours a day. You have to have a good reason to do that. If you don't have a good reason to do that, you're gonna, you're gonna be like, ah, I don't wanna study. And then you're gonna try and cram. And cramming does not work in med school. There's too much information. You have to get that re information repetitively. You have to study all the time. It's just not, you, I don't know, maybe some people can do uh, the, the uh, cramming, but I sure the hell couldn't. I knew of a couple people that did cram and they did not They did okay for a little while, but it really over the long term, you don't remember that stuff. 
and so it's going to be difficult then going two years later remembering your anatomy right for the USMLE because really the first two years you got to know that you can't just know for the test you have to know for long term because in two years you're gonna have to take the USMLE and you have to do very well and you can't go back and you know memorize everything from the USMLE because you forgot all that shit because you just you know crammed the night before you can't it just it has to be long-term memory this is why there's a high percentage of people to go to Caribbean schools don't get a residency and so the only thing I would say about that is that if you are on the fence, don't do it. If you have your shit together, you'll be fine. And, and you you go in there with an ass-kicking attitude and you're like, I'm gonna crush every test. I'm gonna get an A on every test here because if I don't get an A in a Caribbean medical school, right, I'm not probably not gonna do very well in USMLE. That's, well, that was my attitude. And that, I just basically got A's on every single exam in med school for the first two years because I was sh myself I was so scared I was gonna fail the USMLE and then be in a really tough spot because if you fail it you can still get in the residency but you're most likely not gonna get the one that you want and it's gonna be you're gonna make it really hard for yourself so I think that's all I wanted to say it it's a scary statistic it's a real statistic but there is a very definite reason why that happens and if you are not part of that you know, 50% that really are not committed, don't have a, a great motivation. And the reason why, I mean, I had, I had a specific reason in my head every single time I sat down, it was the same thing. You know, I wanted to be a surgeon and that drove me every single day for 12 hours a day. If you have that, that's great. You have to have it. If you don't have that and you think you're probably doing this for an outside reason, like not yourself, and you know if you are, then don't do that. Go follow what you really want to do because you'll be amazing at that. That's the key to all, all this success and doing hard shit. Like if you are doing hard shit takes obsession level commitment. And if you're obsessed about something, you're going to do really well at it. It doesn't matter, you know, what it is. It could be, fucking, you know, the worst calculus in the world and if you're obsessed and you love calculus you're gonna you're gonna do great me not not my deal anyway hey yeah i hope you guys like this video please comment share like subscribe to my channel and i'll see you next time take care